Slowly we're collecting the parts to make a complete bike out. We've got a few frame castings and that sort of thing, and eventually it will be, at least it'll have the heart of the old first Harley bought into Australia. They found it was not economical to sell them at the time because we're basically a British Commonwealth and uh, our dollar, our well, pound was too tied to the British pound to, to make it feasible. This one here is a 1912 factory racer. Uh, it was found in England in the late 60s. Now these have got no clutch, no gearbox, no suspension. Where the counter shaft there was to make two short chains, because one chain that long with manufacturing techniques that then would have just stretched and broken. But uh, is to push it, then you turn the throttle and that'll free the exhaust valve, that open the carby, and they only run at full throttle. That's it. So, so this one's 1916 and that was the first year the grey painted bikes. This will be painted the same colour as that when it's finished. And the reason uh, that that was the last year of that was uh, both Harley and Dyson were married to German women and everything in World War I uh, German was painted grey. Uh, you have on these, you have a thing called a town and country on the exhaust, make it loud or quiet when you get into town and that was so you didn't scare the horses. Um, you didn't have a choke on these, what you do is you suck up a bit of fuel there and around on that side there, you open that up, point the thing in there and squirt a bit of raw petrol in there and that'll get you going. Now, this in 1916, these were quite capable of doing 60 mile an hour off the showroom floor. Uh, three speed, 1000 cc, and uh, a very reliable bike. Different exhaust system with the town and country on the back. And uh, when you hop off your bike, you, they didn't have side stands or kick stands at all on bikes then, it was rear stands. With that, you can hop off, hold the handlebar, grab the rack, just drop the sort of back stand down, and lift it back. To own something like this, you would have had to be part of the gentry. One thing they never did was put their head lower than the common in the street, so you never bent down. So that was the only idea of these straight back bars, called gentlemen's bars. They're three-speed tank chains. Behind the gear, uh, um, behind the gear lever there, you push it into gear and you push forward because with no front brake, you've got to use your right foot to balance you and your left hand and use a hand clutch. Uh, very, very easy. It sounds complicated, but once you've done it a couple of times, it just becomes second nature to you. Australia was the second country in the world to get front brakes. First country in the world to get front brakes on Harley Davidson was uh, New Zealand. So you push, push rod going up and down, and that puts a bit of oil over the top of your motor. So dust sticks to that, and that did cause your motor to overheat. Front stand on these, and that was so you could do tyre repairs on the side of the road. This is actually a 1932, and 1932 was the lowest production year since 1915, and that was because of depression. Advantage of a side belt motor, you've got no moving parts near the outside of the top of your motor, so uh, you didn't get the oil sticking to it, so they were much more reliable. And you've still got your uh, fuel primer and your fuel cap. In 1932, they were down to 2,000. The biggest user was American police forces, and the second biggest user in the world was the Japanese military. Uh, Japan invaded Manchuria, North China, and uh, Japan had already bought about four and a half thousand bikes. They needed more and they went to Harley and said we'll put an order for eight thousand bikes. Wouldn't have been a bad one to get, would it? Mm. And uh, Harley said no, we, um, Harley said no because we can't make it for the price you're prepared to pay. They agreed to sell the manufacturing rights of the machinery to Japan so they were made in Japan from 19, 1932 through 1935. Mm. And what they did, they started making their own bike. Everything on the front forks is interchangeable with that except for the back legs. What the Japanese did because they wanted more ground clearance, they made that longer and heavier and put spaces there. The sideboard and all that, the clutch, the primary and all that's interchangeable with the Harley. The gas tanks, all the lids are all same as Harley Davidson, but uh, it's a Japanese motor transmission. This has got drive to the psycho wheel, you can engage and disengage through there while you're driving them on. Um, this is one of only three of this model ever made, and uh, I've got half of another one, and the other one went to the bottom of the ocean in World War II. 1936, what they call the knucklehead. Well, it's called the knucklehead. You put your hand like that from there up to the top, 
the narrow gets wider, and you've got four big lumps across the top, same as that. So that's where your knucklehead uh, name comes from. These, these were uh, a massive seller in America, but they weren't sold uh, in great numbers in Australia. 1942 WLA, they made 88,000 of those in World War II. So they took it, just unloaded through a tarp over it, and some people doing some fencing on the property found it about 10 years ago and gave us a ring and we went and chased that one up. But uh, this one was sold to a guy called Bernie Sandhurst. Uh, it's sold in 1947, although a 46 model. and uh, was sold with a big sidecar on as a commercial delivery bike. Uh, we've still got the sidecar for this one. I bought this one in 1970 for Bernie. Had 21,000 miles on it then. And uh, we retired it when it got up to 521,000 miles, which is, wow. I couldn't do an 800,000 kilometers. I uh, had this one when I lived in Orange about 20 something years ago, so a few of you might have seen it around there back then. There's work vehicles, these were used for delivering uh, fridges, wood stoves, uh, upright pianos, anything really heavy because they didn't have tailgate loaders on trucks. So to get off a truck, a piano used to take about eight blokes to get something off from up there. To um, get one of these off, uh, to get it off one of these, you only that far off the ground, so you just slide it off with your little Samson trolley or furniture dolly. Now, this is the same motor as the WLA, and it was first made at the end of 1928, that motor, with a different generator drive on the front of it, but the rest of the motor was the same. And they were last made by the Harvey factory in 1977. They stopped using them in production uh, survey cars in 1974, so that's the longest running of any internal combustion motor, car, truck, or motorcycle in the world. Decided to build themselves a little thing to take on the British bikes coming in. So basically, they use the internals of that motor, but built a new motor transmission in what they call a unit construction, where they're separate motor and gearbox. This is all in one set of cases. Now, these um, was first year in the small twin of the telescopic forks, aluminium brakes for better cooling, twin cradle frame, rear suspension, uh, foot change, uh, four speed instead of hand change three speed. Uh, rear mount oil tank, one piece gas tank. Went on in 1955 and 56, they made base versions of these that held all the world flat track records right through the late 70s. And in 1957, they put an overhead valve top end on that same motor and call that a Harley Sportster. 1958, they put hydraulic rear suspension on, they call them a duo glide. And the last year of the pan edit, this one here, 1965, they put electric start on them and call them the electric glide. Now, that one's a genuine police bike. That came from a place called Shiloh Falls in New York State but we couldn't get New York State Highway Patrol stickers, so it ended up with Californian Highway Patrol stickers on it. They only ran a generator to charge your battery, and the generator uh, puts out about half of what an alternator, even in a uh, Evo model, puts out. And with electric start, it was quite easy for these to end up with a flat battery when you're doing um, stop-start riding at night. The 1970 Sydney Motor Show was actually in November 1969, and that's a Burlington Simmons bike, um, that was in that year. Air Mackey Italian Company, they made planes and motor motorcycles. This one here is the biggest bike that Air Mackey made. It's a, 90, it's a 1975 SX350. This one here was sold new by a company used to be down the end of the street called Formac Machinery. They only ever sold two Harleys down there, so we own 50% of all Harleys sold new in Candos. They got the factory alloy wings. These are surprisingly fast little bike. And, uh, yeah, the different paint job really did it. That, that bike there was um, is a fact, factory built in uh, 1934 Harley Davidson, and they banned the um, they banned what this is what's called the unlimited class. They banned them in 1937 because they put too many people in coffins and wheelchairs. But that actual bike is the one that came. Um, uh, third in 1935, 36 and 37 in the American Hill Championships. And at the end of World War II, the only building left after they dropped the atomic bomb was the oh. Harley Davidson oh. shop. <laughs> so the knuckleheads, you can get them in a 61 cubic inch or a 74 cubic inch. And uh, the early meant 61, the element 74 oh, okay. and uh, uh, sorry the e, e meant 61 and the F meant 74 but uh, they kept with the F when they went up to 80 and yeah, even bigger So do you live in town or you got a property out? No, I can't down the back here down the scrub there mate. Oh okay. Mm, I just come in to check up on my mate but he's not answering the door so oh, you he's, he's, he's crossed the great divide old mate. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
you got a dog to keep you company oh, or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've had a dog, mate. Where is he now? What did you bring him in? No, nah, mate. She's too bloody hot. Yeah, she's down at mate, so I just took her down there, but no, she's only a pup, mate, because she put some miles in already. So what, do you got a cattle dog or no, a dingo or what? No, she's a bloody uh, little shit house brush, like a terrier. <laughs> oh yeah, they're pretty cool. Oh mate, mate, mate. No, I've always maintained, I've bred cattle dogs mate, but yeah. I've always maintained mate, the smaller the dog, the bigger the brain, you get these big dogs, they're not going to fucking yeah. got nothing between their ears mate. So you always live around this area? Yeah right? mate, yeah. I'm bred here. Oh okay. Yeah, never went away mate. Something about the cow cock, you know, as I say. I used to be a happy, happy man, but not many the people I can understand. I promise you this and promise you that, and when you're in trouble, then. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic, mate. Thank you very much. Oh, for that's that. good. I've sort of never heard a lot of that stuff before. Well, that's, that's the whole idea of doing this. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, enjoy your bike, Mike, and the um, Jenny shovel. I had to import those. But the rest, even that um, 62 panhead that's going to get it there, that was sold new in Melbourne. Mm. And they're nearly all the Australian bikes. Baby was sweet as she could be Before she 